You're listening to the Caribbean Climate Podcast, produced by the Investment Plan for the Caribbean Regional Track of the Pilot Program for Climate Resilience, funded by the Inter-American Development Bank through the Climate Investment Funds and implemented by the Project Management Unit of the University of the West Indies Mona Office for Research and Innovation. Haiti, one of the proudest and bravest nations in the Western Hemisphere. Though rocked by disasters of natural, socioeconomic, and political means, the French Caribbean nation remains a picture of resilience. In this episode of the Carib Climate Podcast, we speak with Adli Celestin, focal point for the National PPCR Project in Haiti. Adli shares there's more to Haiti than what meets the eye. So Haiti, um, recently, unfortunately, Haiti has been known for making the headlines, you know, about hurricanes, earthquakes, um, several disasters, political violence, and so on. And maybe one of the key words that they use for Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. But um, Haiti is also, you know, uh, uh, really uh, one of the the countries in the greater um, um Island, one of the greater island in the in the region, is in the center of the Latin America region, and it's also known for its epic history. Um, I think people always said that um, Haiti was the Haiti was the first independent nation in the Latin America and the Caribbean, and it was the second republic in the America. But Haiti is also known, you know, for its culture, for its arts and craft, for its carnival for the voodoo and for the gastronomy, you know, all those good food that we have in Haiti and so on. Caribbean islands are like a key, has a key aspect when you're talking about Caribbean, you always think about sun, the beaches, the, you know, coconut water, all, all those um, so nice things. But in Haiti, I would say it's more the mountainous um, aspect of Haiti. You know, Haiti means literally mountainous um, country. Um, and so because of its topography, it has some um, breathtaking panoramic views, nice coastal line, and a, a, a really interesting bio, biodiversity that really needs to be preserved. So for me, that's, that will be the, the aspect of Haiti that will be, for me, what makes it unique in the Caribbean. Caribbean islands are connected by similar historical and climate experiences. What are Haiti's most pressing climate challenges? Well, nowadays, you know, you, they talk a lot about... Um, it, it, today is like one of the, the key subjects. Everybody's talking about climate change. And in Haiti, um, our most pressing challenges are, are, are really the, the, the threat of sea level rise, increasingly intense hurricanes, the frequent tropical storms. Um, what, I, what else I can say? You know all those, all those, um, all those, all those um, elements. But Haiti is also particularly vulnerable to drought, coastal erosion, landslide, and all those disasters can jeopardize the country, food security, infrastructure, and safety of the population. I know that a lot of people talked about the earthquake after 2010, March in 2016. And more, and more recently, they, they, we, we had a, an earthquake in a certain region, and all of those, those disasters made, made it vis- visible the, the, the impact that those um, climate challenges could have on the population. What was the state of the climate response before the PPCR project? So, um, climate change, is, I cannot say something new in Haiti. Um, since 2005 and even 2006, they started to talk a lot about um, protecting their environment. Um, you had a, 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 a framework decree that was that was um, promoted and designed in in 2005. You had what they call the Haitian National Adaptation Program of Action that was available since 2006, and it was one of the benchmark I think for embedding action to strengthen the country's climate resilience. Um, so we, we, it's been a while that we were talking, that we talked about climate change, but, um, but, uh, before the PPCR project, 
this is really where the conversation were, were happening. Um, in 2017, one of the, the one of the progress that the government of Haiti made was the ratification of the Paris Agreement in 2017. And they also introduced what we call the National Climate Change Policy. So this policy, um, it, 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 uh, in this policy, we, were, we had the possibility to, to have a vision, the, the, the vision to reduce the vulnera vulnerability of climate change um, for the population and, and, and different sectors in Haiti by 2030. Um, and before PPRC, we had other projects that were going on. Um, in 2011, for example, we have a um, project for the coastal community, building adaptive capacity. We have projects that were, they were um, funded by EU, EU Global Climate. We had the pilot program for climate resilience that started in 2014. And, and we have several other projects that have been implemented with focus on climate research and action supports. They were um, they were they were implemented by NGOs, university, and uh, some other ministry in Haiti. But um, all those efforts were done and are in process of happening or, or being implemented. Implemented, but at the same time, you know the the particular unstable situation of the country threatened all of, of those efforts. Both the regional and national tracks of the PPCR projects coordinated programs to boost Haiti's resilience. So the PPCR project has two aspects in Haiti. You have the PPCR, like the general PPCR, that had four main projects that were financed through, the, the, through this program. Um, so it was with the support of IDB and um, World Bank that a strategic plan for climate resilience were developed. And in this plan, we identify four main projects that has to be implemented to help um, um, and, uh, re reinforce, I can say, the, the, the resilience of Haiti. So it was four main projects. So we had one that was climate proofing of infrastructure in the central Artibonite loop. Another project was strengthening hydrometeorological services project. Another one was more on climate proofing of agriculture in the center of Sibonit Loop. And the last one was the municipal development and urban resilience project for Haiti. So all those projects were, 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 were identified based on, the, on what we call the, the, the PANA. So it was a national adaptation program of action that identified all the the, the vulnerabilities of Haiti or the sectors the, the, where, where, the, where we have the more um, vulnerabilities. And based on that, those projects were identified. And at the same time, we also had the Caribbean, Caribbean Regional Tract of the PPCR. That was another project that was funded by IDB, but it was also happening in Haiti. The pilot initiatives in Haiti were targeted to reduce environmental damage, restoration, and preservation of the degraded natural resources. Yeah, so the, the four key areas, I, I could say, is like the, the idea was to um, integrated management of water resources and watersheds, inter, integrated management of coastal areas, rehabilitation of infrastructure, the preservation and strengthening of food security, um, in, particular, in particular to the development of um, some bioeconomy maybe, and, and to reduce as well the, the independence on fossil fuels and education awareness. So, so um, that, that were the main point where they are focusing on um, for those projects. So, so the, the, um, uh, the, the main objective of the, of the PPCR in fact, was to um, really demonstrate and integrate climate risk and resilience in core development planning. So in those areas, like um, we're talking about infrastructure, we're talking about agricultural um, um, sector, we're talking about meteorological services, we're talking about urban resilience. So all those aspects were to, to um, 
stud, studded somewhere because like I pointed out, uh, the PANA, the National Adaptation Program of Action, identified those, those, um, those sector as priorities for Haiti. And, and the idea of studying with those projects were to, to, to at least pinpoint where we can have some impact of the, on, the, on the climate resili resilience. How did these initiatives help to enhance resilience in Haiti? Uh, again, in Haiti, you know, the, the fact that we were able to start talking about those, those, those aspects, it's something that really was important for us. So in a way, this is how it really enhanced resilience. It didn't enhance resilience in our country, but at least it's, it, made, it started the conversation. And with, with starting the conversation, we had um, um, experts that were coming in and having those, those um, workshops with people in Haiti talking about how to mitigate drought, for example, for example, or how to, or how to um, access new, new data on, 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 the, on LIDAR, for example. So the, the, those projects were, were, were more a uh, 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 starting point were more starting points for, for the, for the resi resilience um, thematic in Haiti. The availability of data was very integral to broaden the scope of resilient actions in Haiti. Let's hear about some initiatives that made this possible. So I will, I will go back to the Caribbean regional track. Um, one, of their, one of their main action, one of the main intervention in fact, it was on geospatial data acquisition in management for coastal areas. So in this intervention, um, they were able to, to, to gather, um, to produce, pro produce, I mean, um, LIDAR data for Haiti for three area on the coastal line. So next to, it was in the Southern region. So they were protected area um, next to, you, you, maybe you're not, you will not familiar with the names, but in Baradale, it's uh, in a, a small area in the southern southern region of Haiti, um, Aglico. So all this um, coastal line is kind of a protected area, and then we were able to have data for the Lagunav Island. It's an island facing the coast of Haiti, and then you had and then you had um, data acquisition for for the. Port-au-Prince area, that's in the, that is the main city, the ma capital, in fact. And one of the main achievements is having those data available for, for, for technicians, for, for um, NGOs, for, for scholars, for, you know, it's really a, 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 a good thing to at least have those data, even though because of the situation of Haiti, because of the pandemic, because of a lot of other aspects, we were not able to implement the whole activity, but at least we had something that we can um, capitalize on. So the idea of using LIDAR data, um, for example, as an urban planner, knowing the, the, the reality of on the ground is really important for us because it helps us anticipate problems linked to climate change, for example, or linked to urbanization. So knowing your territory, through those tools is really important for us as policymakers, as communities, as individuals, as technicians, is something really, really important for us. Another initiative focused on improving resilience within the agriculture sector to boost the nation's fragile food security system. However, the civil unrest and political instability made this difficult. So from the agriculture intervention is still ongoing, but like, like in the other um, um, sector where, where the PPCO were, 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 inter were acting, if I can say it this way, um, the, the problem is some of the projects were not able to be um, completely achieved. For example, for the agricultural aspect, they were, the idea was to have climate proofing of agriculture in, in a region called uh, Tiboni. So the idea was to come up with um, crops that can resist drought, 
And so the, the project started, they, they started to, 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 to have like workshop with, 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 with um, people um, working in the field, um, people in the area. And the idea was to, um, to, to come up with new, new crops that can be more resistant to, to, to climate change. So it was in 2018 that they start that the, this really start the project, and after that we are in 2019. We have all those political unrest in Haiti. Then we had the pandemic. Then we had you know all usual since I don't know three three to two years. So unfortunately, it really has a, a big impact on the on the ongoing of those projects. So the meteorology component. The idea was to come up with um, the 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 for the meteorological component the idea was to come up with the um, contract to analyze for example the current network for the hydrometeorological service the idea was to come up with um, um, station to to have tools to to have an eye on the on for example when you have flood when we are when you had those kind of things, the idea was to come up with station to monitor <laughs> monitor those 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 disaster, for example. And um, so the the diagno- diagnosis phase was done, and then the implementation on the field that was the part that was not um, completed. Achieving climate resilience is a moving goalpost in Haiti. The socio-political turmoil, coupled with the impacts of the pandemic, made engaging with the project extremely difficult. I think um, yes, but while I was uh, while I was presenting, in fact, the project, I think what you can you, maybe what was clear in the in the explication maybe was that the the instability of Haiti had a really really good, like a big impact of on the realization of those projects. Um, the, the problem is because of the, you know, the project could keep going in certain, in certain, um, um, situation, but when a country is just shut down, it's difficult to keep going with the project. It's difficult to go from a town to another town. It's difficult to have people, people traveling to come to Haiti. So, so it was really challenging. And, and unfortunately, it had a big impact on the project. I, I wish that it could be um, uh, different, but um, but um, objectively, it was one of a uh, uh, main main challenge. Building capacity of technical personnel was met with countless logistics challenges, ranging from internet connectivity to safety restrictions. I, I can I can show you like. How, uh, because of that, we had we, we were unable to have a better quality of of result. Um, for example, we had a, a a a project where we were supposed to have um, a training for 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 the for Haitian um, um, technicians. So the the problem, for example, it was first of all trying to gather everybody. It was difficult to have them in one place because it was difficult to move around the, the city. So to have them um, at one place to be able to, to follow the, the training, that was one, one, one challenge. The other one was to be able to have the good connection because everybody was trying to use the bun pass. I don't know how to say the bun pass, huh? you know, the... The, the quality, the, the the thing, what what I'm trying to explain, the quality of the of the of the workshop was impacted by people not being able to come to the to the workshop because it was unsafe to to travel in the in the city. Um, then the idea of having them traveling to to or having the people, in fact, the trainers coming into AD is something out of the question because nobody can. Um, like, um, have like be oh, like be 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 fine with them coming and not be able to be one hundred percent sure that everything will be okay. So you know it's like small things, 
But at the same time, when you put them together, it, they, they just they just jeopardize the whole the whole aspect of the of the activity. A major lesson learned for Haiti was to focus on the outcome of the process rather than the difficulties faced. Adley shares how the project was able to navigate some of the in-country challenges. So, so the the uh, le- lesson learned from the PCR intervention is the ability to 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 gather people. For example, um, before there were th- those crises, um, we were able to identify st- stakeholder like hydrometeorological um, technician to travel, for example, to Dominica, and they were able to participate in a workshop. Um, uh, not in Haiti, in fact, in Dominica. So it was at least um, less stressing, uh, less stressful, but um, so it was, it was something that, that, that was a, a, a good thing for us because it was a good point of, for networking for those technicians. Um, another lesson learned is the, is the uh, capacity, in fact, to, to have people talk about the, the, the climate resilience subject the, the the ability that we had to, for example, in 2016, we were able to gather a lot of people in the in a for a annual um, meeting about climate resilience, and we were able to present the 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 at this time it was the the project like the idea of what we we're going gonna have going to have, and. So it was something really important for us. And, and, so, and so, yes, that's what I can say as the, the lesson learned. At the same time, um, on, a, on another, on another um, end, um, when you say, when we have all those, for example, all those um, information that are, are, are produced for Haiti, um, for us, for the pro- for the PPCR project, Caribbean Regional Truck, we can really only um, capitalize, or or or, or um, we can really really put put like take advantage. I think on the only on the lidar acquisition. So um, the the lesson learned is even though we had a lot of um, difficulty about like achieving a lot of the project but at the end we have we we have um some 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 um some things or some 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 um data or 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 um network or or exchanges that we had that at least are the 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 result of this program. Following the PPCR experience, Haiti is in a better position to strengthen climate action strategy. So, so the, the thing is really um, um, scale up adaptation. It's really take advantage on, on, on what we, we manage to, to, to produce. Um, even though it's a diagnosis on agrometeorological service, even though it's the, it's the connection, for example, on the infrastructure, we were able to make some some studies on on um, planning document. Um, we were able to have um, um, what what they call like the the risk a risk document like uh, for for a specific re- region. The idea is really take advantage of all the products that we were able to 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 have at the end of this project and going a next step with them like scale up ad- adaptation and have. And like, look how we can not not focus, but but start from them and 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 move for something more 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 um more more specific. The the thing is, for example, before before um something some activities of the project, there were some information that were lacking. Um, even though, like I was saying, some activities were not completely done. But we have information that we can we can take advantage and and use them. For example, in in planning document, in uh, in uh, um, different aspect of, for example, um, other other sectors for agriculture, in coastal zone management, in in 
in those in those in those um, sector that where we didn't have the information before. So it's really taking advantage of what we have and move forward. Adley encourages increased communication approaches to enhance regional collaboration to make future initiatives like the PPCR more effective. So, so the, the, the thing is, is really the, the role that they can have is really like trying to, to you know, um, um, climate, res- climate resilience is really reg- the regional aspect of, of, of it. We need to have it in mind. Usually at the scale of Haiti, we have like um, institution that they work on their own with different projects. And sometimes people are not aware of what's happening in Haiti or even elsewhere, we, we, we have a lack of communication. We have a lack of communication on, on that aspect. So for policymakers and not just them, it will be really to try to gather every, like all the efforts together to be more efficient. As one of the few French-speaking Caribbean countries, the language barrier was a frequent challenge that affected participation in regional events. The, the, the thing also that I forget to point out is also Haiti, you know, in the region is the only country that speaks French. So sometimes uh, we, 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 when we have those, those events, for example, where we have other countries in the Caribbean that are more English speaking on country and Haiti is just is the only one speaking French and Creole. Sometimes it's a, it's also a challenge for us to be to be more you know in the idea of having this regional um, um, idea of of working toward res- uh, climate resilience. It's something that we need to have in mind as, as well to be more um, like really think about those those uniqueness of each country to 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 be more efficient. The Carib Climate Podcast is produced by the Investment Plan for the Caribbean Regional Track of the Pilot Program for Climate Resilience, funded by the Inter-American Development Bank through the Climate Investment Funds and implemented by the Project Management Unit of the University of the West Indies Mona Office for Research and Innovation. The Carib Climate Podcast, using data to make climate resilience greater. Mm-hmm.